Uh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. in the box? Hi, gang. How the heck are you doing? John Lotshaw, Crackpot Computing here, and welcome to our first unboxing video. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's only the third episode, and I'm already doing an unboxing. Um, here's what happened. After I posted the initial TI introduction video, uh, a fellow contacted me by the name of Tom Williams out in the Austin area, and he said that he had worked for TI back in the day, uh, and he had several TI PCs. He lost them in a fire, but he still had a bunch of the software, and he wanted to know if I would be interested. Well, yeah, of course. So, he packed it all up and sent it to me, so um, UPS just dropped them off just now. So let's crack them open and see what's, as the man says, in the box. After I posted the first TIPC video, uh, I got a uh, email from Tom Williams out in the Austin area, and he told me that he had had a TIPC back in the day, and he had a ton of software, and he was very interested in seeing if I would be interested in uh, in having it. Of course, I can't turn that down. This is TIPC software. So he sent me two packages, and um, let's uh, let's take a look. Now, I must admit, I got curious, and I went ahead and looked inside, so I have an idea of what's in here. But let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, do an unboxing video, shall we? Here we go. So, um, immediately here, you see there's, here is a um, TI branded manual. This is for Easy Rider. Easy Rider, it was a uh, word processor that was originally made um, for the Apple II and um, was created by John Draper, who was um, the uh, uh, famous as Captain Crunch. He was the guy who broke the AT&T AT long distance system. Um, and he actually wrote it when he was in prison. Uh, he would get off during the day, uh, go and write the software, and then um, uh, at night would go back to jail. Um, Easy Rider, there was a second version. There was another version called Easy Rider 2, which is what we had, and it was not um, anything related to this software. It was completely different. Uh, made by the same company, they just used you know the same name, Easy Rider. Um, but uh, this was one of the word processors that was sold by Texas Instruments, uh, bundled with um, uh, as, that could be bundled with the purchase of your computer. So that's very nice to have that. Uh, we also have in here a big box called soft term pc this was a this was terminal software this was used for communicating with bulletin boards and um services like compuserve and genie and um it's got a little user's guide which is spiral brown to sit flat on your on your desktop uh original installation disc very nice and um wow there are a lot of them in here driver diskettes uh, ooh, that's, that label's not in very good shape. Uh, okay, well, anyway, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of imprinted over here on this side. Uh, and then a very comprehensive technical manual for that. So, um, not much use these days because uh, there's not a lot of uh, dial-up stuff. In fact, I don't even have a modem. Um, but anyway, so there's that. Let's see what else we got in here. This box from Amber Systems. Homebase Handbook. What is Homebase? Uh, oh, this is something not unlike um, Sidekit, which had um, uh, little utilities that were terminate and stay resident. You could leave them in the background, kind of a, a, a crude form of um, multitasking. Uh, little utilities, kind of what like what Apple had on the uh, Macintosh as desk accessories. 
So there's that. Uh, oh, someone's resume. <laughs> Leave that there. Uh, XView86. What is XView86? Software Analyzer. Uh, this is kind of debugging software, development software. Yeah, this goes really deep into, um, you can see kind of debugging kinds of screens here, looking at the um, hexadecimal codes. Okay, all right. The Window Machine by Amber Systems. This appears to be uh, windowing software for development to add windowing routines. Yeah, in, doing, in, in the entering windowing routines into um, your software. Interesting. Kind of uh, interesting what's coming up here. Uh, here's a uh, from Phil Graham, Senator Phil Graham. It's franked. He's got um, Senator Phil Graham. Uh, Congress critters can um, send uh, communications directly to their constituents through the mail free by franking, which is they just sign their name on it and they get free postage. And then here's some sales. Uh, literature for another, this is suddenly seen, had some animal visitation here, and it uh, looks like a uh, page from InfoWorld, maybe, maybe, it looks like the size of InfoWorld magazine used to be, Dr. Dobbs Journal Review of the Window Machine, oh, this, oh no, no, take it back, this is a flyer, this is a flyer from Amber Systems for all of their various tools. Interesting. Some, uh, what's this here? What do we got here? We got a business reply mail. Boy, that takes me back. You don't see that anymore. Because you just go on the internet. And, and then here's the ad with a, with a uh, returning coupon to uh, order home base, which obviously he eventually did. Okay. And a little postcard here. To what is this visual age for a, for a debugger that they made? Okay, yeah, animals. Ugh, animals have been in there. Mm. Okay, interesting. All right, what have we got here? Uh, I got a folder with framework for tech notes. Now I can tell you right off hand, framework is something we're going to see a lot of in here. Framework was a uh, integrated uh, applications package that was made by the Ashton Tate company. Ashton Tate was known for um, uh, the DBase line. That was what started it. And this was a... Um, so these were Technos. This was from a product... that They eventually got bought by Borland. And um, so these were the technical reference notes. These were from the developers um, of that application. Uh, and uh, how to do various things. It was another newsletter, and um, got a few issues of it here. November 91, May 92, April 92. So from um, uh, late 91, early 92. There. And this is Softronics, which made the... Um, Soft term. This is uh, it's sales materials for the soft term, which apparently he eventually did decide to go ahead and pull the trigger on. So very interesting, very interesting artifacts here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, look at this! Look at this tractor feed paper. Oh yeah, this is a printout of um, a README file for some uh, utility that maybe we have, maybe we don't, appears to be a mailing label, a uh, label merge um, printer, uh, software to, to, to print out labels uh, for a mailing list. And then this is for a mail merge application, obviously, to take data from a, uh, a table and um, then integrate it into uh, where these, what we would now call tags, 
are in here to uh, replace those uh, those labels with uh, with information from a, coming out of a database. All right. Ashton Tate Quarterly. This is, oh wow, this is slick. This is 1986. This is from the last quarter of 1986. So when Ashton Tate was still a, uh, a separate company. Um, and this has to do with DBase 3. I remember, I knew people who used DBase 3 back then. Uh, there's an ad for Lattice uh, for a, a C library that allows you to, to access DBase files. DBase was a uh, it was, I don't know, I don't guess you would call it a relational database, but it was a database. Uh, well, the Norton Utilities. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. Was that before? Um, yeah, it was, it was still Peter Norton Computing. It was before um, um, Semantic bought them. Wow. Wow. Uh, but DBase, uh, DBase 2 and DBase 3 were um, very uh, prominent uh, and widely deployed database, and whole businesses were built up around it. Um, and there were all kinds of, there were various kinds of clones. In fact, the, that whole class of software called XBase, because it had a, a programming language that went with it to allow you to, to get in and manipulate, kind of like a, a SQL, uh, an SQL language. Popular electronics from 1976. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Look at this. This is something. How to select a hobbyist microcomputer. How to build a digital auto gas gauge. <laughs> uh, that is so funny because now, you know, we, we uh, think of it as, uh, you know, that's so um, ubiquitous now. Uh, how to determine CB radio communication range. There's uh, re um, uh, um, reviews of various stereo components here. C uh, uh, um, Citizens Band Radio. Ah, oh, wow, this takes me back so much. Oh, the big ads from NRI, uh, Graw Hill Schools. There's probably one from uh, uh, Heath Kit. Yes, I knew there would be a Heath Kit kit ad in here. I knew it. I knew it. Ims Look at this, MSI. Um, this was the uh, this is the computer that uh, Matthew Broderick used in. Um, uh, in war games was the MSI. It was a uh, clone of the. Um, uh, look at all these great t heat HP calculators. Wow. Uh, An ad for Altair. Oh my gosh! Look at this. Look at this. I'm gonna. I'll, I will scan this and uh, make this available. But wow. 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 This is just. Uh, Oh wow! Look at this. Mallory distributor. Mallory was um, became Duracell. Schematics. What is what is this? What is, what, is, what, is, what is this for here? Universal four channel matrix decoder for stereo sound. Uh, there's a uh, article in here about home video games. Roundup of TV electronic video games. And this was this was before the 2600. This is when it was Pong, the original Odyssey. Uh, wow. Wow, this is a wonderful little time capsule here. Look at it. It's got uh, the PCB. Uh, um, you know, you would cut this out and 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 use this to etch your your own PCB. I remember Radio Shack would sell kits to do that. Um, uh, telex communication. Audio Technica. How to predict CB radio range. How to select. Oh, I can't wait to go. I'm going to have to do a whole um, episode on this. Look at this. Oh, my. I'm going to have to do a whole episode on this. This is. This is. Um, A to D temperature converter, propagation. Oh, wow. Southwest Technical Products. C 
CREI, Capital Radio in Engineering Institute, National School. Yeah, there are a lot of ads for these um, uh, study at home electronics courses. You don't uh, see that anymore these days. Um, <laughs> a lock for your uh, CB radio. I remember that was a big deal because um, I remember my my dad had we had a on our CB we had a, a magnetic mount antenna so dad could pull it in and people would, people wouldn't know we had a CB radio so it wouldn't break in and steal the CB. <laughs> uh, Cleveland Institute of Electronics. Uh, well, RCA. Back when there was an RCA, there was another ad for for Altair for the MIPS. Our extended basic and disk basic have received industry wide acclaim for programming power and efficiency. Yeah, that was uh, that was Microsoft Basic. That was uh, where Microsoft got started. Um, These ads in the back are, are just, just wonderful. I just love these ads back here because these are the small little startup companies. Um, oh, I haven't seen one of these in a long time. These, these um, uh, uh, reader response cards, you would, you would mail these back. You would circle which, uh, each, each one of the ads would have a, a number on them. Like, um, let's see if I can find one here. Yeah, like right down here on the bottom of this very tiny type says, circle number 13 on free information card. So you'd go back, you'd, you'd tear this out, you'd circle 13, and then you would get sales literature like what you see here uh, back. Uh, Polypack, I remember them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Applied micro advanced microcomputer products. Let's see. Microprocessors. AMD 8080A. Uh, that was, that was the second source of the 8080 and they were selling that for $29.95. Wow. Um, surplus tubes. <laughs> uh, Jameco, this well James Electronics, but this this became Jameco, which was a uh, for a long time was a major seller of electronics. Um, <laughs> Forty minute eight track recording tape. <laughs> Yeah, I was a kid. I used to love looking through this. I didn't know what any of this stuff was, but I just love looking back through this this stuff. This was just surplus center standard dial telephones, uh, eight dollars and ninety seven cents. Government surplus. Yeah, I just loved all of this back here as a kid. Edmund Scientific. Wow, look at this. Here's some binoculars. Cho NASA chosen for Apollo Soyuz. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna scan these and put, the, put put make these available because that that's that is wow that's great. Let's see. Well, moving moving on moving on. Uh, personal computing tools for scientists and engineers. This looks like a cat. This is a catalog of um, software and very high end. Um, AutoCAD, uh, um, uh, clones and, and, and software to extend AutoCAD, adding a uh, keyboard extender. This was back when you only had 10 um, function keys on it uh, uh, for, for machines that had you know, the XT, the Model F keyboard only had 10 keys on it, 10 function keys instead of the 12. Um, math software. TK Solver, MathCAD. Wow. LaserJet support, software to, to run the LaserJet, networking software and hardware for the LaserJet, sound cards. Barcoding. Digital oscilloscopes. <laughs> oh.
Wow, that's, that's interesting. Nice little IEEE I, I 4888 controller. And that one was, that was the... Um, That was the interface that I think, that, if I'm not mistaken, that, that Commodore used for their floppy drives was the uh, IEEE 888. And then uh, here's another similar, actually this is much more in-depth, uh, much more, uh, your here's your complete guide to cost-effective design, simplification, and operation of HVAC systems. This is really very high-end stuff, uh, electrical utilities and uh, yeah. Okay, and then we have, looks like manuals for framework. This looks like, this is a very early verse. This is before Borland, before Ashton Tate bought it, when it was still Forefront, uh, the first version of it. Uh, framework, like I said, was a uh, integrated software application to, um, with uh, kind of like, well, Microsoft Works would be kind of a modern equivalent of that introduction. But it had a programming language built into it. And uh, Ashton Tate Quarterly. Okay, this is more the Ashton Tate materials that we saw earlier. <clears throat> yeah. Going back to... January 86. Wow. I was in. Wow. This is kind of how, um, you know, these were the support websites of their day where uh, the company would put out um, articles about how to program their software, gave third party. Um, Developers who were, who were developing add-ons and 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 other uh, utilities to um, advertise and get their wares out. Okay, that's the first box. I'm going to put all of this back, and then we're going to take a look at the second box. Note to self, just to edit this part out. Okay, here is the second box. And it is full of floppies. So let's uh, let's get them all out. Let's get everything out here. Uh, some boxed software there. Take a look at that in a moment. <laughs> There's some nice little goodies in here. There's some very nice little goodies in here. Uh, okay, here we go. Now, as I said, um, I got curious and I went ahead and took a preview of what was in here. Tom packed this much better than what you're seeing here uh, because I, it was immobilized in tons of foam and um, did a fantastic job packing. So I, I got, just wanted to uh, uh, say that right offhand. All right, see what we've got here. Well, we've got a bo several boxes of floppy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes of floppy drives. Wow, 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 wow. Um, <laughs> Digital Research, DR Logo. Uh, Logo is a uh, language for teaching computing to children. And um, Digital Research is, of course, best known for CPM. Uh, but they did do languages, and um, uh, this was apparently one of them. And this is definitely TI format. It says right there on the box, TI format. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, there is a video here. Framework 3 demonstration video, 8-inch. Adjust color for clarity. <laughs> uh Good old VHS. At least it's on scotch 
uh, VHS tape. That was some of the best, one of the best brands. Uh, so it's not some cheap OEM, no name. Um, this came from a, a duplicator that, that uh, did it right. And uh, this was the YouTube of its day, kids. Um, instead of going and looking at a video on YouTube, you would get a VHS packed in or be given a VHS at a, at a trade show or something. Wow. Ironically, I've been, you know, I worked in video production for, I still do, um, have since 1984. I don't have a VHS machine. Um, how times have changed. All right, here's our first box of floppies. Let's, uh, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, there's a bunch of them in here. And it all appears to be framework, framework four. Font disks, uh, this is all installed disks. These are backups of the installed disks. Help, system, setup, more drivers. Okay, so it's framework. Apparently Tom uh, used framework and was very heavy in the use of using framework. Um, we're going to see a lot more of that later on. This is a nice case. All right, let's see what we got. Ver framework version 1.1. Tutorial, utility, PFS file and report. Uh, Real-time clock, oh, oh, oh. I have the clock board here. That's great, fantastic. Oh, look at this, MS Fortran compiler. Uh, MS Fortran runtime library. And there's two versions of it on here. There's one for the 8087, which is the math processor, which this computer has, and the non-8087 version. <laughs> MS Pascal, <coughs> excuse me, and the runtime library for that. Wow, so we got, MS, we got Microsoft Pascal, which is cool because I, I, I loved programming in Pascal back in the day, so maybe we'll do some Pascal stuff. These cases have seen some better days, but these did their job and protected these floppies. So that's, that's wonderful. All right. Uh, we've got something in here called PCIP from the Austin Code Works. I, PCIP. I, don't, I wonder if this is a, a TCP IP stack. I don't know. I don't know. But there are docs, and once we get the, uh, uh, the machine back up and running, we can, be, we can take a look in there and see what the documentation has to tell us. I'm going to put these down here, out of the way. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> No, I've been stuck in here for 30 years. I want to I don't want to I don't want to come out. I think we're going to do it this way. There's more than one way to skin it to open a package. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh Marina's customer database, mailing labels, and mailing and letter mail mode. That's probably the, the um, uh, printout that we had earlier has to go with that. Framework for E colon. Basic compiler. Ooh, interesting. Framework, more framework. XView86 symbolic debugger. Framework frames, framework letters, basic menu.bas. TI file commando version 1.54, TI cat commando version 1.06b. Hmm. And then we have a disk that is just labeled Texas Instruments, um, kind of the older TI logo type there. And then uh, one that's just labeled downloads from Austin Net. Okay. So 
basic compiler is very interesting. I, I'm going to be very interested to see what that is all about. All right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, database D forum. Database solutions. Publisher of database advisor magazine. Uh, disk number two for D, something for DBase three. Okay. More framework, framework version two. These are, it's got system two, system one, two, tu tutor two, framework two, tutor one, I'm sorry, tutor one. So those are tutorial disks. Uh, apps, spelling, framework, setup, crosstalk. Crosstalk was another um, uh, very popular uh, communications terminal emulator program. And then these appear to be somebody's data. <laughs> so we're just going to leave that right there. Even though it's probably, you know, 30 years out of date and uh, still. Ah, now we got some interesting stuff here. Uh, the, weight, the weight groups, Master C, versions 1, 2, and 3, these are... Uh, Master C uses a, a it's a it says on here a runtime interpreter licensed by Softwords. So it's it's C. It's a C compiler. It's a C development system. Uh, here's some original discs from Ashton Tate for Framework. Uh, these are run. These are all IBM PC. These are PC, not not TI. Soft term, which uh, we have the uh, manuals for here. These are the backup disks for that. Okay, so C. That's interesting. We've got C. Got a C development system here. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. Sidekick. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. It was uh, the terminate and stay resident. This is version 2, and it is still in the wrapper. Oh, look at you. No, 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 it's been opened. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, but it's still got the wrapper on it. That's the, that's the interesting thing. Program disk, program disk, speller and thesaurus, helping examples. Wow. All right, sidekick. Um, PKZip, PKZip Utilities, QEdit Editor. For DOS, DOS replacement, basic compilers, MicroStar, C++ tutorial disk. I doubt these are for the PC. I think these are for the PC, not for the TI, because I don't even think C++ existed when the TI PC came out. Blackbeard programmers editor, smart disassembler, programmers reference disk, for DOS. Well, so we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll give them a try and find out. Um, but I get the feeling that a lot of this, especially the, the framework stuff, is going to be um, IBM PC and PC compatible. But that's still still pretty cool. What have we got here? PowerC uh, from Mix Software. These folks, I, I looked them up. They're still around. Used to see ads for them. Uh, they would have a C development system uh, for like 20 bucks. And they still do. That's the amazing thing. They still do. Um, the dates on this are uh, much later than the TI, so I doubt these are for the TI. But um, still, we might get a classic machine up and running and do some experimenting with this as well. But anyway, very cool. And in the last box of software, this is probably more for the TI. Uh, PFM, I have no idea what that is. We'll find out. MS-DOS 2.13. 2.13 was the, um, oh, Professional File Manager. That's what PFM stands for. It's got it right there. Um, MS-DOS 2.13 was the version of, that uh, the TI had used. And I have manuals for it over here, as well as original floppy. So it's nice to have some backups of that. Uh, root directory, uh, no telling what's on there. Assembly directory, MS DOS help directory. Now, this is interesting. I really want to get into and see what's in here. 
WordStar directory. I don't know if there's this is just if this has WordStar on it. Well, we'll find out. Lotus directory. This might have Lotus one two. Th I, this might have Lotus one two three because uh, it's got Lotus, Lotus Tutor directory. So this may be Lotus one two three. And then basic slash music. Okay. Interesting. All right. Now there were a couple of other little goodies that were in the box. Let's take a look at those. Here we have uh, from Radio Shack a oh <laughs> wah 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 oh well I was hoping that it would have the pen in it uh, I remember these little watch pens with little ditty uh, LED display in them this oh well. <laughs> Uh, it is interesting seeing the old uh, this old Radio Shack packaging. It really brings back a lot of memories. Uh, one interesting thing is is uh, there's a barcode on it, but it's not a standard UPC barcode. It's because Radio Shack sold all of their own stuff, so they didn't have UPCs. And then uh, let's see what's in here. This looks like another case for another watch pen. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to have one of those pens because uh, I used to have them when I was when uh, back in the day. Oh well, it's a nice little case. Interesting little case there. Insta Dial Memory Dialer. Well, let's see. Let's see if it's just the box or if we've actually got. Oh, we actually have the the unit in here this time. Surprise, surprise. Let's see what we got here. Okay. And uh, it looks like it's got a little four banger calculator built into it. Slide open. And you could put in, I, I remember what these were, that you could use these to um, uh, put in things like your um, uh, long distance dialing codes back in the day when you had separate, uh, when, when you hit, um, if you just dialed with zero or dialed with one, you connected through AT&T, but if you, you would dial an 800 number and then punch in your, your billing code and then you could access other long distance services like MCI and Sprint. Um, this is back in the day when uh, when they were, we were still making, kind of making the transition over from the Bell system. And um, it takes three Mercury batteries. Oh my gosh. I am almost afraid to open this up. Uh, it uses three, um, oh geez, Mercury? Really? Mercury? Uh, but what you could do is you could, you could enter in um, your, your codes for MCI or whatever and also uh, other people's names and things like that. It had an, kind of an alphanumeric keypad in here so you could associate a name with it. And then you would hold this end up to the telephone receiver and uh, you would hit the, uh, hit the dial button and it would play the DTMF tones. So you didn't have to remember your dialing codes and all of that, you could just use this. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's going back a ways. Um, so, uh, so there we go, that's, uh, that's what was in the boxes. And um, Interesting, uh, interesting. A lot of really cool stuff. So, um, so there we go. What can I say? Uh, wow, that was an amazing collection of software. Um, I don't know how much of it runs on the TIPC, but still, it's a great collection of vintage software, and I'm very grateful to Tom for saving it and for sending it along. It's going to... Um, it's going to have a good home, one way or the other. Uh, I'm really interested in the uh, the MS Fortran and the the MS Pascal and the Mix C 
software. Um, we'll see how that works on the TIPC, and if not, we'll eventually get it up and running on the uh, uh, on, on a on a vintage IBM PC or or clone from that era. Um, but I'm I'm really grateful. Thank you again, Tom, for for putting this up here. Uh, eventually what I plan to do would be to archive all of these discs and uh, make them available because uh, a lot of this is abandoned wear and um, I think uh, it would be nice to have that available for the retro computing community. A little disappointed that they weren't there weren't any watch pens in there but you know hey beggars can't be choosers and again thank you so much Tom I really appreciate it everything came uh, wonderfully packed up and uh, just it was great to see that and the um, the extra treats were great the little dialer and that radio that popular electronics magazine from 1976 uh, that's gonna go with my first year of bite magazine which I have I have the complete run of a bite from the first season first, first season of bite the first season the first year of bite um, so uh, I'm gonna make some scans out of there, and because uh, I think because I love those Altair and MSI ads. So anyway, uh, just so you know, the next episode that I do is going to be the rebuild of the power supply for the TI and start working on that. I've ordered the capacitors, the new reefer capacitors; those are on their way and should be here very shortly. When that happens, then we'll uh, re recap it and uh, see if we can get this old girl back up and running again. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please, please subscribe to the channel and click the uh, little bell to say that you uh, uh, want to get updates when there's new episodes. And also like the video. That really helps out with the algorithm. So, until next time, it's John Lotshaw, Crackpot Computing, saying bye.